So I signed to come to Coffeyville, Kansas and teach school in 1951, the fall of 51. And that's how I got to Coffeyville. First year of teaching school, I learned more about teaching than any university ever had told me about. That was a rough year. Um, and the next summer, my friend who I had acted with and was in the National Theater Group for Chicago had gone to Atlanta, Georgia, and she called me up and said, come down here and let's work. So I went to Atlanta, Georgia that summer to be with her, and we wound up on WLTV uh, Atlanta in the early days of television, dancing. When we were in the uh, National Theater Group at night after the productions, well, we liked to dance together, and we were good friends. So we would go over to some of the resorts and just dance for the fun of it, and because of the dancing that we did, they would ask for us to come back, and it got to be that we had to go put on performances, dance performances after the show. So we partnered in uh, Atlanta on the television show. We did uh, three nights a week. That meant you worked eight to 12 hours on a routine, and in two minutes or less, the routine was used up and you started from scratch. We worked our tail ends off. Out of it, I was offered a, a contract with an agent, and they would go on and feature me and put me into this show and that show and so on, but they wouldn't take my partner. Well, I had fallen in love with Coffeyville. I, the kids were amazing. They were very talented. I enjoyed the people. I enjoyed the people I worked with. And I thought, well, I really don't want to do this just yet. I want to go back and see if I really like teaching as much as I did the first time. So I came back and made the decision and told the agent, nope, and wouldn't sign the contract. And so that's how I came here. We was going to give a, uh, a play out at the bandstand out in the park, and a gentleman by the name of Bruce Bohannon and I was going to build the sets, and I got a I knew Birch and all, and I got a and I asked him to for advice to uh, how to build a set and what to do and everything else. And he graciously consented and and told us what to do, and we did it. And then when uh, uh, we needed a director starting our community theater, why uh, we thought that Kenneth Bersenho would be a good one to ask uh, as a director, and he was. Uh, both of them have acted in shows for me oh, ever since the early 50s, great people. And, uh, Sabrina Fair, it called for a garden scene and Roy was doing scenery for me and I asked him for a stone wall and I'll be danged if he didn't go out and get the stones and sliver them and glue them to these panels. We had the heaviest piece of scenery I had ever seen in my life and he, hey, it was great. But both of them, Phyllis did, um, if anybody knows Phyllis, they, they know that Phyllis is a very prim and proper lady. Um, very religious, would not do anything out of the ordinary. And we did Suds in Your Eye. It's one of the first shows we did with community theater. And it's the story of these three old ladies who drink beer. And the whole set is, the fence is all beer bottles and this, the, I mean, it's unbelievable. And she played one of the three old ladies there and did a tremendous drunk scene. Howdy McMurray. Um, was a very good friend, a, a very dear friend. Um, Howdy helped me uh, many times. One time in an illness, he took over, uh, he and Bruce McKinney took over the summer theater and did the shows for me, and uh, Howdy was always performing. He was a good, solid person to work with. He helped me on the sets at the high school. That's how I got to meet him. He was a teacher there. And Howdy was a great person. There are a lot of people. Mm -hmm. A lot of people. They're scattered all over everywhere. Well, Ken Birchnall and I go back quite a ways. Uh, 30 years, actually, this year. Uh, and uh, that means that that was at a time when I knew him when he had hair. 
but actually, uh, even though it was 30 years ago, he'd already garnered enough uh, credits to his name to receive this award long before I even knew him. But I remember the two productions I was in was your good man Charlie Brown and then uh, The Apple Tree the following year. Directed by Kenneth Birchall, or Mr. B as we all called him. Birchall and I came to the CCC the same year. He, we had worked together at Field Kenley and then um, when I graduated from Field Kenley, coincidentally he just went on to CCC as a um, theater director there and since that was a big part of what I like to do, that's, I became involved in that too. We did several shows. Um, that first year we did uh, Blythe Spirit and uh, that was my first opportunity to play a ghost and that was real fun. I enjoyed that. And uh, from him I learned how to act on the stage, how to move, uh, when to move, uh, uh, when not to move, <laughs> uh, and and it it stuck with me ever since. Uh, uh, th this man meant a great deal to me. It, it he taught me an awful lot about the stage presence, and uh, I was in many of the high school plays from then. And he moved on to the college, and I uh, I graduated from high school in 1970, and that's when he went to the college and more or less followed him over there. It was a real nice stage in theater to work in after our previous experience. Everything, we just thought we had died and gone to Broadway, coming from Field Kinley and especially Floral Hall. <laughs> so it was, uh, it was really a fun experience that I think, when I think of CCC, theater's what I think of, of my time there. And the theater was air conditioned. <laughs> yeah. Including the workshop. Yeah.